Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of HCS Matters. I'm John Wright alongside John Stith. John is our Chief Operations Officer for the district. Uh, finance falls under him, uh, transportation, um, gosh, child nutrition, buildings and grounds, and also construction. And that's why we're here today at Central Hardin High School, probably the highest profile uh, project uh, in the district certainly going on right now. Uh, and John, uh, this building, even though it opened as a high school in 1990, it still had a little age on it, older than that, right? Oh, absolutely. I think uh, the heart of the building goes back maybe to the 70s. Mm -hmm. I remember it as Hardin Central. Mm -hmm. We used to play basketball in the rubberized floor in the gym, <laughs> so uh, it's got a lot of character, that's right, for sure. Right, yeah, right, right. Yes, but it, it, so it, it needed renovation. Just talk about that, how, how we got to this, to the point of renovation. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the, the hardest part about this facility is, you know, it was built as a middle school. Mm -hmm. So when you put, you know, when I was in high school, you know, back in the 90s, it had 22, 2300 students in it. So while it, it, it worked, it didn't really function very well as a high school. So that was the challenge, was trying to do this renovation, bring it up to uh, modern standards, and then also deal with the wonkiness of having a middle school become a high school. Mm -hmm. So I think the board made a very wise choice in um, keeping the parts that really function well and then ultimately getting rid of the part that didn't function well. Mm -hmm. So uh, pretty excited about the project, really. Now, when you all kind of sat down to do this project, I believe it was then chairman of the board, Charlie Wise, who kind of looked at it and said, hey, we can do things a lot more efficient, move some things around, and that's really worked for this project, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I really applaud Charlie for, for the leadership and the idea, uh, because as we just said, you know, you know, sometimes you have a square peg and a round hole, and that's really <laughs> right. what we were kind of doing here, and he, he fixed that by mm -hmm. saying, hey, let's keep the 90s portions of the buildings, they were the newest parts of the building, they function well, Let's connect them uh, in a way that makes a lot of sense, makes it easier for kids to move around the campus. And uh, I think everybody's gonna be really happy with what uh, the final product's gonna so be. So when we sit down to, okay, we decide, okay, this needs to be done. So what, what's the, what are the project, what are the, what are the next steps? And kind of walk us through those until, until we get to the construction phase, what do we do? Uh, for this particular project? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, where we're at now, um, they've kind of started here in the back. Uh, we just talked about the rubber ice floor from the old uh, 70s portion of the building. That gym, the old gym actually uh, goes away in what we're talking about phase two. We're in phase one right now. So the part that you can see is the new auxiliary gym. Uh, and it, that's the part that comes out into the parking lot kind of uh, toward Taco Bell. And then the building kind of wraps around the big gym, the, as people kind of know, the 90s part of the, the gymnasium and goes along the front with some new classrooms, a new media center, um, uh, several other uh, neat rooms, a new weight room, uh, and that'll all kind of come up to the front. Uh, if you're familiar with Century, you know one of the issues with the building was some people said, I'm not even sure how to, where's the front entry? Right. And so that'll kind of culminate there in the, the middle of the building with the new entryway, a new admin area, and that will connect to the, uh, the 90s part of the facility that kind of goes out towards 62. So uh, that's where we're in our phase. We've started here in the back and we're working our way to the front and uh, coming along pretty pretty good. So when we, when we start a project, there's, there's a lot of things that go with it. It's not just, hey, Board of Education, let's vote to renovate Central Hardin. Talk about some of the, some of the next steps in, in any project that, would, that would we take moving forward. And there's a lot of, some, some red tape we have to cut. Sure, sure. Um, so the, the process all it really begins with our local planning committee. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, so that's a group of 20 individuals uh, from really all over the county, uh, principals, teachers, uh, parents, uh, different uh, community leaders that have some knowledge about what's uh, growing, where we're growing and where we're maybe shrinking around the county. So they get together and say, okay, these are the facilities we think that need to happen for Hardin County Schools. And then they kind of give that plan to the board. And then the board looks at those different projects and you know, it could be three projects, it could be 20 projects, and they kind of put them in priority order. And this was a, a big priority for our board is uh, getting this facility upgraded and, and making it uh, 
kind of commensurate with uh, facilities that are around the state. Right, and we did this well before the, the announcement of the growth. I mean, uh, uh, we, we, this, this, this project was, was on the books and, and, pr and proceeding before that. Yeah, it, it had been on a long time, and I think it was on when I got here in 2015. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you renovate a high school, you know, it's, it's your biggest facility in the district, mm -hmm. and um, it, just, it takes a lot of resources, mm -hmm. so it kept getting you know, passed over, passed over, and finally it it, uh, it, it was time. All right, okay, so we're gonna go into the construction and, and uh, we're gonna put on our hard hats. John already has his, uh, John White, and our, our photojournalist and I, we're gonna put on ours. We're gonna go in and uh, see what's happening inside and give you kind of a bird's eye view of what's happening inside the renovation at Central Hardin High School. We're standing now in the auxiliary gym. John, talk about, I think the, the, the uh, unanimous uh, notion we had here is that it just didn't look this big from the outside. Yeah, everybody says that. When we yeah. come on site, they see it from the outside and I guess they get a little bit underwhelmed, but then they come in, they're like, gosh, this is really, yeah. this is really nice. So that's probably, again, one of the, the negatives about the old auxiliary gym is it's just, uh, it's kind of small, yeah. especially for this size high school. Uh, they end up having to use it a lot for the cafeteria, so they mm -hmm. couldn't even use it a lot mm -hmm. as a gym during the day. but. It's going to be a nice new facility, a wood floor, uh, six goals, volleyball standards, uh, cheerleading can use it, art and have archery net. So it's really not one of those multi-purpose spaces that um, really function nice. Right. Can it? Can it? Can competition be held in here? After? Oh, absolutely. And okay. you probably won't play a lot of your varsity sports, obviously, sure. in your auxiliary gym. Most high schools don't, but right. it, it'll be a high school size floor, so set up nice if our little league programs want to come in and run a tournament. Uh, Wow. Our cafeteria is actually going to double as we've done in a lot of our recent mm -hmm. facilities as an auxiliary space as well for basketball, for volleyball. So you'll, you'll be able to have three different um, games of you know different type of uh, sports going right. on uh, on a regular basis. Right. So this is a, and, and the auxiliary gym, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the auxiliary gym that we currently have at Central Harden was the gymnasium for Hardin Central. Is that correct? It was, yeah. yeah. When it was a middle school, that's right. where you played your games. Right, Absolutely. right, right. So a big, big, big improvement. And, and it's, you know, uh, to talk about just, and I don't mean to keep harping on it, but we, you know, we, we used that as an auxiliary gym for 30, um, 32 years. And well, 33 years, if you count this year, uh, for, for Central Hardin High School. So to say it's overdue is, <laughs> it well, is well past, Again, you know, back in the day, I'm sure in the 70s, it was, you know, quote unquote, state of the art, but, right. you know, 50 years later, and it's uh, right. in bad need of a makeover. Right, right. So we'll move on now to some other parts of the building so you can, um, our viewers can see the, uh, the other uh, construction going on. So John, what we're seeing now is kind of kind of the the gut, so to speak, that people won't see when they come into Central Hardin High School. But this is a, as you said, uh, and I can think it's the I think it's the proper terminology. A lot of high dollar stuff here with HVAC and, and stuff like that, right? Yeah, probably almost a third of most of your construction projects are spent on your MEP, mechanical, electrical, plumbing. And so, again, this building will be super energy efficient. Um, if we get a chance, we'll go out and look at the soccer field. They, mm -hmm. they drilled uh, close to almost 300 geo well uh, holes, 300 foot deep uh, on the soccer field. Uh, but, you know, obviously in this day and age, you want to have you know, energy efficient uh, systems so that uh, we're getting them the most quality with the fewest uh, dollars. And uh, so that this facility will be upgraded uh, completely when we're done with uh, a very energy efficient uh, mechanical HVAC. So a, a savings to our to our community and to our taxpayers, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, because yeah. you know, the systems here are at Central are, are pretty outdated and we're in bad need of mm -hmm. uh, upgrading. So uh, yeah, it will get a, a complete retrofit for not just the new square footage that's been added, but the uh, the square footage that we're renovating sure, as well. Sure, sure. So um, again, not, uh, not a high traffic area, obviously, but still a very critical uh, part of the construction phase, and we just wanted everyone to see uh, that uh, this part is, is critical uh, in the in the construction and, and renovation phases. So a big focus, obviously, of Central Harden High School, especially to the community, is, is the gymnasium. It obviously hosts a lot of district tournaments, region tournaments, just uh, athletic events, graduations uh, to some 
uh, 400 students every year. Uh, even though graduation will be back here this year, uh, because obviously you can see the, the uh, angst of the construction. But John, this is the main entryway. This will be the new entryway, uh, correct, for, for, uh, for athletic events and events going into the gymnasium. Yeah, absolutely. And, and to be honest, I'm pretty excited. We're hoping that we'll, this will be the entryway. Kids will come in uh, oh, this coming school. fall oh, okay. in, in August. Now, the rest of the building obviously won't be done, but we're, we're hopeful that the new auxiliary gym and the, uh, the main gym will be uh, available to them this fall. But yeah, uh, again, as you come in from, from Taco Bell, it'll be a new entryway into this area. It'll be super nice. Uh, it, and the nice part about it is, I don't know if you uh, folks that have been to Central Hard and High, unfortunately, we don't have an elevator right. to get from the main floor to the mezzanine yes. floor. But so in, in this addition, uh, we've added the elevator. There's restrooms on the on the main floor, so folks don't have to try to go all the way back up through the building mm -hmm. to uh, get there. There'll be a new concessionary that'll service the new auxiliary gym as well as the main gym. Awesome. And one nice feature is. You'll actually be able to walk all the way around the second floor area if if a person wanted to. So if you if you're a, a, a cross country person, a, a track a athlete, right. you'll be actually to practice indoors and go all the way around the gym on, on the second floor. So a lot of wow. nice features for right. for this upgrade. So we're standing, John, basically where you know I think a lot of people know the that bank of doors that was in the uh, that were that was in the gymnasium, the main gymnasium. We're kind of standing kind of in that vicinity, right? Yeah, we're standing right above it. As a okay. matter of fact, okay. the doors would be right below us. We're kind of in the old parking lot, so to speak, yep. and we're uh, on the second floor. Yes, right. sir. So, uh, and if John can pull the, the, the uh, camera around here. So what we're seeing there, that brick, that is, that, that, that is the, uh, the old wall, uh, so to speak, the old gym wall, and that will be uh, eventually coming out. There'll be windows there uh, and an entryway into the gymnasium. Yeah, so on the left here, that will be the entryway where you go in. Uh, to the big gym on the second floor in the mezzanine. This other cutout will actually be for windows. You're exactly okay. right. So you'll be able to look, uh, if you're sitting in the gym, out into the lobby area from the lobby, and you're getting a hot dog or whatever, and you can right. still kind of keep an eye on the game. So right. again, it'll, it'll have a very nice look when it's finished. So uh, there's not, uh, per se, there's not a lot of new construction going on in the main gymnasium. Is that a fair statement? Just a little bit. Okay. It's mainly renovation. Um, as everybody that's been to the big gym knows, one of the, the, I don't know, quirks about the gym is when you went from the main floor to the second floor, there's an unusually large step yes. to, to get up there. Yes. So the bleachers are coming out. We're going to correct that so there'll be a nice even transition from the fourth floor to the second floor. But it's mainly cosmetic, new paint. Uh, one thing we are doing a little bit different, we're going to hang the goals from the roof to make it a little easier for the coaches yes. to be able to have practice. Uh, but yeah, the locker rooms are kind of getting a makeover, uh, some new HVAC, we talked about the HVAC, the new HVAC, but yeah, it's, it's mainly, mainly just cosmetic right, right. In, in the big So gym. there'll be some small changes people will see in there, but definitely noticeable, but this, uh, when, it, when it gets finished, uh, it is, uh, this will be kind of, a, you know, what, what uh, um, lobby areas are in construction, very welcoming, very up to date, very modern, and uh, this will certainly um, give a facelift to uh, a well-deserved facelift to, a, to an already wonderful building. So uh, we have now made the turn. If you're uh, stay, you were standing in that mezzanine area, we've now kind of kind of made an L shape, and now we're in, in the area, John, where this, this will all be just additional classroom space and a new media center. Yeah, I, the, the bright shining star of this part of the building is that new media center. If you've right. been in uh, Central Arden High School, you know, again, I think that media center goes back to the 70s. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's pretty dated. Uh, the new media center will have lots of windows. It'll be very bright. It's very big. Uh, and I would argue it's a 21st century media center. You know, right. back in our day, you went to the media center to check out a book, and, and nowadays lots of different things happen, technology, mm -hmm. uh, things that go on uh, in the media yes. center, what some people would call library. So yes. it'll kind of be a focal point in the front. Um, it'll have some diff additional spaces inside of it for uh, students to meet and collaborate and design. So super excited about this part, and I know 
lot of folks are happy to see us come up out of the ground here uh, <laughs> and uh, get going toward that the other 90s part of the building. But right. uh, this is obviously uh, a little bit further behind the other other part of the building, but that was kind of by design. So uh, here pretty soon you'll start to see the entire addition building envelope uh, take right. shape. So we are standing uh, to give everybody kind of logistics where, where we're standing. We, If you are on uh, Highway 62 or, or Mulberry or Litchfield Road and you're looking toward the building where it says Central Hardin High School there on the on that gym wall, this is where we're this is where we're coming. So so John will that uh, you know once we're up and out you know once we're up well that gym well that wall that uh, that brick wall that we see there it won't necessarily come out it will uh, there'll just be a, a big thick wall there. Yeah, when we have buildings of this size, uh, the new fire code kind of requires you to have some separation. Okay. So this actually works out well Good. for us. The building's designed to where if there were an unfortunate incident of a fire, one wall stays up while the other wall uh, okay. uh, goes down. Right. So it provides you a, some additional security in those type of situations. But yes, you really won't see the old exterior gym wall anymore. You'll you'll see the the front of the new building that'll be right. uh, you know 20 30 feet uh, or more actually out going into the parking lot towards 62. Now so we talked about uh, possible usage date of the, of the gymnasium hopefully uh, in, uh, in August so when when will this be accessible this area be accessible to students? Sure it's it's a little bit further out sure um, the substantial completion date for the project as of our last project meeting was uh, April 22 of 2024. Mm -hmm. So uh, spring of next year, uh, we hope to be uh, buttoning things up, starting to work on punch mm -hmm. items, but uh, still still a bit of ways, of ways away from having this part of the building ready for students. Right. And then after that, hopefully, uh, when, the, when the, of course, the board obviously has to approve, that, approve this, but there is uh, a phase two. Yeah. Uh, so unfortunately, yeah, um, again, it's a big, big project. And especially when you're building on site, you, you really can't do all the mm -hmm. all of it in in, in one bite. Uh, there's you know teachers need places to teach, and kids obviously need places to to uh, learn. So it, it, it always had to be a, a phased mm -hmm. approach. So yeah, we get done with phase one. The board may choose to go on to phase two, and that's where we'll look at um, renovating the other 90s portion of the building, get it in much better shape. We'll we'll have moved into the new square footage, and then hopefully at some point be able to get rid of the old 70s part of the building right. and and finish that last phase of the project. Right. Up. So uh, let's talk about parking. I know uh, this, this, <laughs> this uh, you may well take some tubs sore, before we do this. Subject. <laughs> so, but uh, obviously this eliminated some parking spaces, but uh, even though it's a little bit farther away, and I think people have gotten used to it, we did buy some land for some additional parking. Yeah, the, the board's, I think, been very thoughtful and um, I know it, it may not seem that when, you, when you're the one that has to walk it, but there's you know additional parking, temporary parking the board has put in, We're working on some additional parking in the in the front of the building. So when it's all said and done, the, the parking around the building will actually be much nicer. We just got to get from here right. to there. Right, right, yes, right. And it's it's been a painstaking process, and and you hate to go through the process, but you got to get through the process. And in, in a year, from what I'm hearing you say, in a year or more. We're going to be very glad we went through this process. I think so. You know, again, you know, there's always growing pains in any organization, and uh, it's just one of those unfortunate things. But I, I, I really believe that when we're finally said and done, I, I think the the community is going to have a facility all the way around that they're going to be extremely proud of. Yes. Sir. So the the '90s, what we call the '90s uh, area or the freshman wing, uh, that that will still be there, but just maybe some renovated, some renovation and some sort of expansion. No, absolutely. The 90s part is mainly renovation, very little square footage. We are adding an additional hallway. If you've been in the 90s portion, where the 90s portion comes into the old 70s part, as we talked about earlier, it just creates a bottleneck. Uh, and so kids, you know, it's very difficult to get from the 90s portion through the 70s portion yeah. to the other 90s portion. Right. And so by adding that additional hallway, we really hope that's going to alleviate some congestion. So that's really the only additional square footage on, on that part of the building that, that will take place. All right, so we'll continue our tour. So John, tell us what we're, what we're seeing here. I guess just kind of back out in the parking lot, but it's also from that, uh, yeah, from that so, classroom area. So we're kind of in the highest part of the new construction. Uh, and again, this will kind of be the vantage point. Students, mm -hmm. we would look at over the new parking lot. Um, 
this area right here is mainly classroom space. We have family consumer science that's in the bottom okay. floor, JROTC. Um, and I think just a, a few couple standard classrooms. But again, just kind of gives you a little bit of perspective of how large this project really is. So we are standing in the gymnasium, the, the main gymnasium uh, of Central Hardin High School. What everybody knows and remembers is, is the main gym. The, old, the Bruins still up on the wall. Just the bleachers are gone and uh, some renovation going on in here. So John, uh, revisit kind of a little bit about what, what we'll see different in here. Sure, probably the main difference is on the westernmost wall. Uh, again, if you're looking toward Taco Bell, if you're in the gym, you'll notice now that there is the, the mezzanine has been extended along that wall. So yeah. like we were talking about earlier, if you're on the second floor or the upper level of the gym, you're now be able to walk all the way around in a circle. So you can go from the building proper over into the new entryway area. Um, you know, so folks that are uh, running, conditioning, uh, can make that full complete circle. Um, so that's uh, the biggest, uh, the newest feature about the gym really. Um, We've, I, if you look up in the rafters, you can see we've got some new duct work. So again, new, a new HVAC system. Uh, we had to do a little work on the, on the roof structure itself so uh, we could uh, support the new goals. Uh, you'd see a lot of plywood on the floor. Uh, yeah. We are trying to reuse the floor. It, uh, it uh, actually got renovated, yes. I think 10 years ago or so. So it was still in pretty good shape. So we wanted to keep that. Uh, we did do some extensive plumbing rework in the locker room areas uh, some of the areas didn't have water and other amenities that you would expect to have in a gymnasium so they got rearranged but we'll be putting some new flooring in uh, so uh, a new railing system along the second floor new bleachers uh, we have some new lockers going in the locker rooms the uh, training facilities getting upgraded so again just overall, just a nice uh, facelift uh, for right. this area. I know, I know our friend, Brother Mike Bell, wants to know the sound system uh, is coming back, <laughs> right? I mean, the, the renovation, the, the renovated sound system that we did in here probably two, two, three years ago, uh, that'll still be that quality sound system. Yeah. Tim Isaacs and his staff, to his credit, they really uh, spent some money and, and upgraded the sound system. So yeah, that was one nice thing that we didn't have to renovate, but yeah, right. it all comes yeah. back. Absolutely. Okay, good deal. So uh, is there, will there be, will, will the, you know, it was that Carolina blue or that soft, uh, what we call Columbia blue, will that will the walls still be that same color or do we know that yet? Yeah, we, we picked out all the colors. Oh, okay. I, I think it'll be more of a, of a, a background color, okay. uh, probably more of a gray, but uh, we will certainly we'll incorporate. When you come in here, you will get the Bruin fill, the bleachers, uh, some of the sound panelings and different things that'll be going on in the uh, gymnasium. You'll feel, if you're a Bruin, you'll be at home. That's, right. that's for sure. Right, so, so John, the, our architects at uh, JRA, our construction managers at Alliance, They've really worked hard to give them credit. They really worked hard to get this project, keep it on time, because as we know, uh, it, it's not easy in the construction world right now. You no, know, it's not. I'm, everybody's competing over workers. There's a ton of work, uh, I think, across the nation, but certainly in Hardin County, there's a lot of work going on. So uh, I think some different foremen from other sites show up and try to steal each other's workers. <laughs> it's, 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 you know, kind of a dog-eat-dog -dog environment right now, but they've worked hard. This is not an easy project. It's not an open field area. Um, you've got students, you know, 1,800 students, 100, over 100 faculty members that are coming out in and every day. So uh, got to applaud Alliance. The site superintendents ha has had a great relationship with Tim Isaacs and his staff, and they've really worked hard to try to make this project minimally invasive to what's going on in, in uh, the building as possible. So it's, so far, I think it's gone as well, just about as well as it, it could have. So uh, again, so will there'll be a, a that entrance that, that John's videotaping right now, uh, Mr. Smith. That will still be. Uh, will people still be able to access that yeah, mezzanine there? Absolutely. I mean, if you're familiar with Central Harden, uh, the entryway in from the building proper again that stays. That lobby area all stays. Matter of fact, band is not moving. Uh, the ag rooms are not moving now. They're not getting renovated in this phase, but in phase two, that will all get upgraded and it's gonna lead into, and I, I don't know if we're going the building proper or not, but we're, in this phase, we're gonna have a new kitchen, a new cafeteria. Uh, again, that's one of the, the 
rubs about the, the current facility is it was never sized yes. for 1,800 students. It was right. sized for a six, 700 student middle school. So um, I wish that was a little bit further along because that's another area that I think folks are going to be extremely proud of when, the, when this uh, first phase is done. Uh, the building is going to function so much better for the high school age child. So, it's really going to be nice. When people ask, why are we doing this? Well, we've been serving uh, 1,800, 1,900, 2,000 of our closest friends every day for lunch for 33 years in a kitchen that was built for 700 students, 800 students. A absolutely. And, uh, you know, Tim Isaacs, could, I'm sure, could explain the woes of that a lot better than I could. But, you know, when. Uh, you, you have a facility that's not right size, it just creates problems all the way around. Mm. You know, you, you have to have lunch over a much longer period of time than you normally would. You're taking yeah. spaces that you typically would use for instruction. Now you're turning them into spaces to, to make the uh, building function for uh, lunch. Uh, that won't be the case when, when we're done. It, it, it's going to be nice. And this will, you know, this will help instruction overall. This will be a sense of community pride. I mean, um, it, it, it was just time to do it. And um, I, I know you're glad to, you're glad to, to start on it and get it through to where it is right yeah, now. Absolutely. You know, when you think about it, a high school, all your students, elementary, middle school, will eventually make Linda their way Peter. to high school. Right. So um, if, if, you know, if you're, you're wanting to do what's best for kids and you want to touch everybody, uh, renovating a high school really makes a lot of sense because mm -hmm. eventually everybody winds up here, everybody gets to use it, little league programs you know make their way up here mm -hmm. so uh, all in all uh, and again maybe I'm being a little biased I think spending money on high school makes the most sense of any facility really in the district. Uh, so we're standing now in front of the soccer uh, complex, which we could not use uh, for the 2022 season uh, because it was under construction. And John, tell us why this area was under construction if we were renovating inside. <clears throat> tell us why we had to dig up here. Sure. Well, um, we were talking about it earlier while we're in the building. Uh, obviously, the board had to upgrade the HVAC uh, MEP portion of the building. And part of the way to do that was to drill geo wells somewhere on campus and the logical choice for us was the soccer field uh, we had to drill about 300 holes 300 feet deep wow and so that uh, obviously ate up a lot of real estate and made a big mess but the good news is for our soccer families is that we're going to come back in uh, get the field back in better shape than it was in uh, before we we did that work and along with that, we're gonna upgrade the entryway a little bit. Uh, the concrete and asphalt was in pretty bad shape. So that's coming out and it's gonna get replaced. Uh, we really were in bad need of an additional concession and storage area. So we're gonna do that in conjunction with the uh, press box for soccer. And the concession stand will, will feed not only the soccer field, but also the football field and get them out of the old block house, which was too small and if you've been to a football game you know mm -hmm. it backed up horribly so mm -hmm. that would be real nice and the board even took it a step further um, if you were been following the board meetings the board also decided to spend a little bit of money to upgrade the baseball field we had a pretty bad drainage problem which had created some water damage to the third base dugout so we've got that done and got that filled in, in much better shape for, for this spring season so not only are we doing a lot for the academic side of the world here at Central, but doing a little bit to try to get our uh, uh, athletic complex upgraded along the way. So what I'm hearing you say, baseball will be ready to go. In, in We're standing here in late February. It'll be ready to go uh, when Coach Cruz throws out the baseballs yeah, uh, in, in uh, later this spring. Came out last week or earlier this week when it was 80 degrees or whatever it was. <laughs> right. And they were out there throwing. I don't right. know if they'll be throwing right. today, but right. yeah, the, the, the baseball field's ready to go and we anticipate our soccer field to be ready to go, uh, ready for play of uh, August, uh, mid-August mid, mid -August of this, this calendar year. Yes, sir. Well, we hope you've enjoyed our tour. I thank uh, John White and John Stith for helping us out today and, and going along this tour. I think it's been uh, good for you, the community, to see what's going on here, how your dollars are being spent. They're being spent very wisely and in a very, uh, very good manner because at the end, the end product of this will be a sense of pride for our community. We look forward to it. Thank you for joining us for this edition of HCS Matters. Mm -hmm.